Okay, so here we are back at part two where on the screen I'm showing you the chart where I've taken notes and comparing the differences between the 12 dispatched as the sheep, the neuter prabatan, and the 70 dispatched as the fatted lambs, the masculine arain. Which let me say right out of the gate here that these two classes of animals are types and shadows of others in the coming days and testifying time. When the Lord again will be led into the dwellage to lead the completion of the Christ into the all in all. Where the finishing of the cities of Israel, Matthew 10, 23, will be accomplished into the all finished of the third watch time. Of which those among the sheep class will finish in raising up the one last sheep. So let's proceed to go through this chart piece by piece. We're first noticed that the 12 are said to be called, which is the Greek proskeleo, where the 70 shown up, anadiknomai, where the prefix here is from the preposition pros, number 15 on the preposition chart, which denotes motion with a view towards or into an interface with something, which then, of course, preposition locates the 12 as being with Christ. In his presence, his parousia, according to his dispatching them as apostles. And although the word proskeleo translated called here is contained within a larger word family, it must be distinguished from keleo, which means to call in the sense of to invite or even call someone by name. Where again here the context is that Jesus is calling them towards himself with the intention of an interface according to the characteristics in his dispatching them, which characteristics are very different from the 70, which Luke only accounts for these in Luke chapter 10, where these are not called into an interface as the 12, but rather they are shown up from the verb anadiknomai, occurring here in one other time in the New Testament, where the ana preposition denotes motion and or position that is upward, number one on the chart, of which the second occurrence of anadiknomai is found in Acts chapter 1, verse 24, where the twelve are seeking a replacement for Judas, where as praying ones they said, You, Lord, heart knower of all, show up us the one whom you have out chosen out of these two, anadiknomai which is also according to out choice, where the statement for many are called, but few out chosen, seen in Matthew twenty-two fourteen, is something that I discuss in my video, The Wedding Feasts, which parallel the calling of the 12 and the out choice of the 70. Now next, unlike the 12 who were dispatched two by two, in the context of follow me, the 70 were dispatched two up each, where we see here Anna again. Anna up, duo, duo, followed by the preposition pro, of which the position of the pro, the before, is his face, in the field of his vision, his two-eyeing. So in contrast to following, these are sent before his face as forerunning, all demonstrated in the superposition of the Anna not only in the anadiknomai, but here in their dispatching two up each, in contrast to the twelve, the duo duo, two by two. Which now brings us to the next point, where we see that in Matthew and Mark's account, the names of the twelve are enumerated. And as for the identity of the seventy, we don't know who these were because they were not named. Their names were secreted, where in Luke chapter 10, verse 20, Jesus makes a profound statement concerning their names being enwritten in the heavens, from the Greek word engrapho, containing the preposition en, which is in, not to be confused with apographo, translated recorded in the DLT. If you've watched many of my videos, by now you should know that the Greek preposition apo denotes motion that is away from the surface of a thing. Number four on the chart, where the Greek preposition en, number eight on the chart, places that thing in a thing. So apographo translated recorded can be compared to an enrollment, where the truth is that those according to the recorded in the heavens is according to those who will enter at midnight, 
where the first ones and written will do so at even tide, according to what I speak about in my video series, Workers for Reward. And that there are those who step further out of the death into the life, the Eonian life, John 5.24, others go into or towards the same life, the Eonian life, each according to his own class. The relationship between the enwritten and those recorded could be expounded upon much, but I'm simply giving an overview here concerning these differences between the 12 and the 70, where Jesus only makes this statement to the 70, unlike the 12. And until one is enwritten, okay, in grapho, in the book scroll of life, Philippians chapter 4, verse 3, one will not enter the regency of God not at eventide, and not at the midnight all convocation, which is also likened to a great supper, Luke fourteen sixteen, And the fact is that not all will become fatted at midnight. Many will still remain among the sheep class, where some of those sheep will enter the sheep of the courtyard of John 10, 1, but others wholly loosened away among the other sheep of John 10, 16. This parallel to the twelve as sheep being dispatched to sheep wholly loosened away is seen in Jesus' statement in Matthew 10.23. Not ye not will you finish it regarding the cities of Israel till the Son of Human comes. That is, comes to segregate the sheep from the kids. And the you here who will do the finishing is referring to the class of sheep, not Peter and the twelve, who will herd the other sheep in the pit of the Gehenna concerning the under-remnant dragging along into the all-finished. So as I stated, as a type and shadow of the dispatching of the twelve, others will carry the torch in the finishing of the testifying time impending. And where the seventy were not given specific instructions regarding where they went, the twelve were. They were instructed to go only to the holy loosened away sheep of Israel as sheep dispatched to other sheep. The exact thing we see in John chapter 10, verses 1 through 16, where we see that Jesus instructed the twelve not to come away into the nations or a city of the Samaritans, and Samaria made up the northern regency of Israel among the ten tribes, the diaspora, in contrast to the southern house of Judah, the two tribes where in Isaiah chapter 7, verse 9, we read that the head of Ephraim is Samaria, and the one and only occurrence of the word Ephraim in the New Testament is found in John chapter 11, verse 54, which states, Jesus walked no more with frankness among the Jews, etc., which the context of the Jews refers to the house of Judah and the Judaizers, those practicing Judaism. And as I discuss in part two of my video series, Workers for Reward, the house of Judah are the context of the foremost ones who Jesus came to who will be the last to allot the regency, where those among the nations who are the last will be among the foremost. But what needs to be noted is that the twelve as sheep were also dispatched to other sheep, wholly loosened away where this is not the case with the 70, but rather we see the mention of sons of peace, Luke chapter 10, verse 6. And if a son of peace is there, your peace will up-repose on, on him, otherwise it will turn back on you. Now, although the only common denominator here is the heralding of the regency of God, we see that the instructions regarding those not receiving the 12 and not hearing them is to shake out off the dust out from your feet, where the 70 were instructed to wipe away, which is from the Greek preposition apomasso, found only one time here in Luke 10, 11. And these distinctions between that which is shaken and that which is wiped away are profound for those who have eyes to perceive such differences. And the word ekathineso translated shake out only occurs four times in the New Testament where three of the four regard the statement concerning the twelve, as seen in Matthew, Mark, and Luke's account, where the fourth is in the context of Acts chapter 18, verses 4 through 6, where the Apostle Paul, Silas, and Timothy are heralding to the Jews in the synagogues each Sabbath 
where of course some are made compliant, but those opposing and blaspheming, he said to them, shake out off the raiments, not the feet, but the raiments. Because again, the coming testifying time will involve the finishing of the cities of Israel. So here, according to the shaking out of the raiments, we read, your blood comes upon your head, referring to the day of slaughter. Where Paul then states, I am clean from now on, I will go into the nations. Where again, I expound upon this in part two of my video series, Workers for Reward, at around the five and a half minute mark. So what we see is that the heralding to the Jews was binding to be first, foremost, but then after the turning to the nations, last. Where what we're seeing between the 12 and the 70 is the same. The 12 are being dispatched to the house of Judah, the 70 to whichever city among the nations, in like manner to Paul's commission. In contrast to Peter's commission to the circumcision, where yet more differences are seen in the dispatching, the 70 are said to not seize a bag, pouch, sandals, nor to greet as according to those on the way, where the 12 were instructed not to take or lift pouch, with no mention of a bag, two tunics, sandals, staff, bread, silver, nor copper into their girdles, in that there is no bag mentioned according to the 12, nor the statement regarding the greeting according to the way, where also according to the 70, there's no mention of two tunics, staff, bread, silver, or copper is not coincidental but very deliberate and could make for a detailed study in itself but for the purpose of this overview I've simply placed the list of items here for you to consider yourself to show there are indeed distinctions here and they do have significance. Now another very important distinction is that Jesus instructed the twelve to become sober-minded as the serpent and without a hornlet where most translations mistranslate the Greek phronimos as wise here, become as wise, but this is not correct because the Greek word sophia defines wisdom, where phronimos is contained in a word family describing mindedness. And sober-mindedness is very different from wisdom, where the flip side to sober-mindedness is foolishness, where five of the virgins in the parable of the ten virgins are sober-minded, but the other foolish. Where again, most translators mistranslate phronimos in the parable of the ten virgins as wise, when the virgins are not wise. Wisdom is sophisticated on knowledge. Sober-mindedness is not. The virgins possess little flasks of oil where there is a treasure to be desired and oil in the homey of the wise, the homey being the home and the land, not a little flask, Proverbs 21.20. And if someone is instructed to become something, that means they have not already attained to such. So according to the probation of the sheep, they are instructed to become sober-minded because they are foolish. And the word hornlet simply means pushy, unpleasantly self-assertive. Now, the 70 are not instructed to become anything. And where Jesus instructs the 12 to become sober-minded as the serpent, Jesus gives the 70 authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions, but also on all, every ability of the enemy. Luke chapter 10 verse 19, where in verse 18 is the unique statement also that he makes to the 70, I beheld Satan having fallen as lightning out of the heaven, which accords with the unveiling of the lawless one, the son of the whole away loosening. In the statement Jesus makes that I perceived Satan suggests that these two perceive what he perceives in relationship to Satan fallen as lightning. Where in Luke 10.23, Jesus said to them, Blissful are the eyes of those seeing what you look see. For I say to you, many prophets and regents were willing to perceive what you, yea, you look see, and they did not perceive it, and to hear what you hear and did not hear it. Which this statement is specific to the class of the fatted lambs. Where Jesus didn't make the statement to the twelve regarding Satan. 
and where again Jesus states their names have been enwritten in the heavens, he speaks of the spirits being subordinated to them, which brings us back to the 12, because we see also they were given authority over the unclean spirits to drive them out, but they did not have the same authority that they tread upon serpents and scorpions and all every ability of the enemy where the 70 rejoiced that the spirits, okay, the bespirited ones of the evilness, were subordinated to them. And in Luke chapter 9, verse 40, we see an example of the 12 not able to cast out the unclean spirit, obviously demonstrating that this unclean spirit was not subordinated to them due to weak or little faithing, where we also see the characteristics of despondency with Peter and others among the 12, among the sheep class which despondency is hesitation in contrast to confidence. And in the same string of verses in Luke chapter 9, where again, verses 1 through 6 account for the 12, we also observe their unknowing regarding the talk of Jesus, which was veiled from them. Luke chapter 9, verses 44 and 45, where yet again here in verse 46, an over-consideration arose between them regarding who would be deemed the greater one in the regency which demonstrates lack of humility, but desire to be over-appearing as the greater one. Where yet again in verse 49, they perceive someone driving out demons. Where he tells Jesus, we prevented him since he did not follow with us. And who could have this been casting out demons who did not follow with the sheep? Well, it was one of the 70. And why did this one not follow with them? Well, because they were not instructed in the same manner as the twelve. But Jesus had to admonish this also, saying that whoever is not against you is for us. So what should be noted here for the accordingly accomplished mature mindset? It's not the sheep versus the fatted lambs. No, the body is one body, but has many members. And one member doesn't say, I have not need of you, or I'm greater than you. That kind of attitude demonstrates the lack of the accordingly accomplished one. The lack of sober-mindedness. But the point being is that we see these characteristics among the sheep class who are not yet fatted due to their lack of growth in understanding and maturity. So, in wrapping up this video, let me make my last point here in comparing the 70 with the 12, where again, when Jesus stated, I have given you the authority that you tread upon serpents and scorpions and on all, every ability of the enemy, he also stated, and not, yea, not, yea, not, one will do you injustice where the spirits who are subordinated to them are the same that Paul enumerates in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, the bespirited ones of the evilness. Since for us, the reeling fight is not to blood and flesh, but to the origin beings, to the authorities, the cosmocrats of this very darkness, to the bespirited ones of the evilness in the heavenlies on where here is the very important context of the all armor, the panoply, where those slipped into the all armor are able to withstand in the evil day, withstand and stand against the methods of Diabolos. So what is to be perceived is that those who are slipped into all of the armor are likened to the 70, not the 12, but the 70, where the statement, and not, yea, not, yea, not, one will do you injustice, was not said to the 12. And in verse 16, where Jesus dispatches the 12 as sheep amidst the wolves, well, the following verses demonstrate much injustice for the namesake of the Lord. To be given over to the Sanhedrin for scourgings, verse 17, is injustice. As one's being given up, this will be involving the time of affliction, when the brother against brother and father against child, etc., will be given each other up into death. Verse 21, where the sheep class will be one's being hated by all because of the name of the Lord, where the below abidance will advance the twelve, Peter, John, and the others, that they may not be found among sheep in the coming testifying time in the finishing of the cities of Israel, where, as I stated earlier, the you will not finish it is referring to the sheep class. 
and the till the son of human comes is referring to the segregating of the sheep from the kids at the all finished, the all finished of third watch time. And where these are instructed to flee, well again, this is all seen in the context of the sheep of John chapter 10, where people will be fleeing everywhere fleeing from this city to that city, fleeing into the mountains, which is all according to the coming wolf, the Antichrist. Hence, when, as it were, you perceive the abomination of desolation that having been talked of through Daniel the prophet, having taken stand in the holy place, let the reading one think it over, of which we don't want to be reading ones at this time. Because this is the hole away loosening where the wolf robs those who do not enter the wedding at midnight, where then others are fleeing, where some of the sheep who enter the courtyard will find pasture, but others wholly loosened away among the other sheep of John 10:16. Again, in the finishing of the cities of Israel, into the all finished, Hebrews 7:25. And here, what Jesus is telling them in verse 19, when they give you up, you should not worry how or what you should speak, etc. Similar statements are made in Luke chapter 12, verse 11, which helps us to identify the class that this address is being given to, that being sheep. And notice Jesus also says, a learning one is not above his teacher, showing the status of these as not yet teacher. So sheep are not teachers, but learning ones commonly translated disciple. The verb manthano means to learn. Matthew 9.13, learn what it is. Mercy I want and not sacrifice. And in the same word family is found the noun methetes, translated learning one. And to translate this disciple suggests that a disciple is a disciplined one, which is not the case. However, it is sufficient that a learning one become as his teacher and a slave as his Lord. So, of course, there's advancement and growth. Because, as I stated before, unless one becomes fatted into the growth of on knowledge, which is the girding of the rementure of the wedding, well, they will not enter the wedding. One must become sober-minded without the characteristics of pushiness, over-assertiveness, brash, presumptuous, etc. Where again, if one is instructed to not be such things, well, it means they are presently acting according to such characteristics, as not being sober-minded, but foolish, as one's not being gentle, meek, but rather obtrusive, of which the characteristics of sheep are many. And upon my examination of all the occurrences of Prabhatan translated sheep of the New Testament, I really don't see any one characteristic that would indicate this is something to aspire to. Where in closing, I'll simply scroll all of these characteristics that I've noted from these verses. So I hope this has been helpful in opening up your eyes concerning these figures of speech among these two gender classes that you may grow into the accordingly accomplished human to become among the fatted ones, as ones given yourself as standby to God approved, so that when the Lord may be revealed, 1 John 2.28, you may have frankness and not be put to shame away from his parousia, his presence.